Hello everyone, I am Hacklebeast and we are moving into the playoffs. That is right, we are into the playoffs of the Swedish Brood War Initiative Nation Wars. It is Central Europe versus North America. On the left side as the Red Terran, we have Skyline of Central Europe. And on the right side as the orange Protoss, we have Jumper, Jumper of North America. Boom, boom, ba-boom. Boom, there we go. There we go, we're good now. We're good. All right, why is it not on the calendar? It's not on the calendar because Team Liquid did not accept it. They were too slow. Those bastards. Oh well, not a lot you can do. So, Jumper versus Skyline. All right. The way the play, the way the playoffs work is is going to be the same. It's going to be more group stages. Um, in the regular season, there were two groups of four, and the top two teams out of the out of each group went on for a total of four teams. Now that we have four teams again, we're going to do another group. And it, you can think of it like OSL format, where everybody, there are four people in the group, everybody's going to play everybody else once, and then top two will advance to the finals. Which means uh, three weeks of playoffs at least. Theoretically, we could go into the last week knowing who's going to be doing it, and then it's effectively two. But there will be three weeks of games casted. And... And then, sorry, and then there's the possibility that there will be ties. Because if we have... 2-1-2-1-2-1-0-3 it means that we need to determine which one of those three at the t which two of those three at the top go on and if we have 3-0 1-2-1-2-1-2 then we know one person that's going on for sure but then we need to figure out which one of the other three will be moving on but that's way down the road we're just starting off the playoffs now clean slate no one gets advantages in the playoffs based off of their records in the regular season uh, it doesn't matter that North America um, got in in the first slot or Central Europe got in in the second slot. Nope, we are resetting everything here. It is worth mentioning, since I didn't explicitly say it yet, um, the four teams are North America and Central Europe, obviously. And playing on the other side, which should be casted tomorrow by Elegant, is Russia versus Poland. So, North America, Central Europe, Russia, and Poland. Which, hmm. trying to remember now which teams made it to the playoffs last time. If I remember correctly, it was Rush. There were six teams because the format was a little bit different. It was Russia, Poland, America, Germany. Yeah, Russia, Poland. America, Germany, and two others, Asia Pacific, and I can't remember the last one. I cannot remember the last one off the top of my head. I actually want to look that up, because obviously Russia's still here, Poland's still here, and then USA. And then USA became North America, so they're still there. I'm wondering if it's all the same people. I don't know if Central Europe was in the playoffs last time. I know Central Europe now has Hungary in it, and Hungary did not make the playoffs, and that was quite the surprise that Hungary didn't make it, but... Alright, and Skylim's moving out. 
is that six marines? That is six marines. One tank, two SCVs. Jumper has lost his first zealot, so it's just, just it's just going to be the goons. He doesn't even have that many goons. He's already thrown down his expo. He's going for um, one gate expo into robo. This is a pretty um, greedy build. Oh, he still does have the zealot. Whoops, I missed that. Um, that's a pretty greedy build, uh, especially considering the Skyline has a little bit stronger of an FD push than normal here. The mines are going to be picked off, and the vultures picked off before it can lay any more, but losing most of the goon? Nope, keeping that one alive. So two goons left along with the SCVs, another vulture comes just laying down all the mines, still trying to snipe those goons, but Jumper's doing a great job. Doing a great job of keeping those goons alive for the time being. They are losing another one, losing another one. And now it's just down to one. The net, the natural, excuse me, the natural has been evacuated by the probes. Although a lot of them just died in the defense. There weren't that many that got away. And now we're mining up the ramp. And this is going to be hard. This is going to be hard for something to deal with because he went for that early robo. He has the observatory done, but he's not making an observer. That would come in handy with dealing with the mines. And there we go, the tank finally down, the vulture's dead. You know, for how greedy Jumper was here, it's kind of okay how many losses he took. It's not good, so certainly Skyline's coming out ahead of that, but it's not as game over as it should have been, considering that the Nexus is still fine. And as long as the Nexus is fine and Skyline isn't able to kill that right now, Jumper can get it he can work his way back into this. He's yeah. He's behind by eight supply. It's not good. Not good for a Protoss to be behind by eight supply this early. Um Am I casting the upcoming TSL? I have not been asked to. I am probably not going to. But, um... I... yeah. Don't ask me any more questions about that, because I have some kind of negative views. Uh, certain aspects about that, and sh I shouldn't. I really should not have anything negative to say. I should say only positive things about it. But because I don't want to say anything negative, because it doesn't deserve to have anything negative said about it, I just don't want to talk about it. It's a great thing. It's a really great thing. I hope it turns out to be the great event that it should. Alright. So, uh, Jumper is stabilized. He's setting up his pylon wall. Um, this is, for those of you who are not familiar with this matchup, um, this is set up to keep out the vulture harass. If you wall in with pylons and make it so the vultures can only get it in at one spot, it's a lot harder for lots of vultures to get through, and if you really want to, you can completely block it off with one goon, um, making it, just making it so the vulture harass is less of a possibility. Vultures are a lot like Zerglings in that they're cheap to make and they can do a lot of damage very quickly if you're not quite paying attention for just a little while. So, it's good to have safety measures against it. That is certainly not the issues I have with it. I am, uh, I'm certain. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. That guy was funny. Oh man. It's like, no. No, nothing else in the world can exist except for things that I like. Because if things exist that I don't like, then it's taking away from things that I could be liking, damn it! Oh, that guy was good. That guy was good. He's probably 14 years old. All right. So, ew. All right, that supply, that supply deficit has kind of grown. Percentage-wise, it's about the same. But oh, jumper! 
Oh, Jumper's eternal weakness in this matchup. He and Mines do not mix very well. Actually, they mix very well. Like, the Mines get all mixed in with the Protoss units, and they create it into, like, a slurry. It's like a blender. It mixes very, very efficiently, but not good for Jumper. Alright. Anyway, this push is coming, and Jumper... It's gonna be hard. It is going to be a hard task to hold this off right now. Man. Stalin's just gonna take a really dominating position here. Turts are going down, already laying down a minefield. Um, the minefield may end up being a little bit too close to some of the units. If Jumper gets uh, Zealot leg speed, those mines can be dragged. And uh, he obviously put the mines in front of the tanks to try to prevent that from happening, but it still might be a li end up being a little bit close. Anyway, he can't move forward. He lost the Observer to this turret, and he may or may not have another one. I don't see one on the map right now. Oh, there was one. And there's one back here. They're just not in useful positions at all. Not to mention, even if he cleared out these mines, the, uh, oh. That's a sad DT. He was standing there for so long, just like, I'm not gonna go forward, because I'm getting hit by mines, and then as soon as he takes one step forward, instantly killed. Oops. Uh, I meant to click on that, yeah. I wanted to see the leg timing. Yeah, Jumper, he doesn't have a lot of options here. It's build as many units as you can before this finishes. As soon as this finishes, attack. And hope that you kill him. You're, it's three base Terran versus two base Protoss, and Terran has a really nice contain at the choke. Jumper has to go for the attack soon, and if the attack doesn't work, the game's over. Even though he's managed to catch up in supply... Um, not quite. There we go. There's an extra 10 supply that just hadn't quite popped out yet. But... Oh, uh, we're going? Alright, we're going. Uh, good use of the shuttle. Dropping some zealots in a very helpful position. Taking out the tanks that are would be way too hard to, uh, to dig out of that defensive position otherwise. And doing a lot of damage here, the mine's not that big of a factor in terms of helping Jumper break out. He's going to have enough. Well, he didn't... No, there's another observer. He didn't die. He did actually manage to break out, but... He's not... This isn't a big enough army to really make any progress. He... Even if Skyline doesn't have that much of his own, he'll be able to make something. Even this force right here. Just throw down some mines that's good enough to defend against any small aggression Jumper can put out. So Jumper really can't be aggressive. And yet he needs to be, because he's a pro boss player who's behind on bases. That's bad. I should stop highlighting that. Alright. Uh, there we go. You just saw a little example of what I was talking about earlier, of why Protoss players do this. It's a really effective way. It's, um... That, that is one example of a theme in StarCraft. It's something... Actually, um... I'm, I'm stealing this totally from Day9. He talked about it in a daily once. A very, very long time ago, but... If you're doing something in StarCraft, why not make it do two things? Protoss is already building pilots. That's just going to happen. So since they're building pylons anyway, why not use them to help wall against vultures? Maybe it'll matter in that game, maybe it won't, but it won't hurt you, and it has a chance to help you, so why not do that? Or putting pylons like here. You're gonna build pylons anyway, why not put it in a position to potentially see a drop? It's gonna be completely irrelevant this game. This pylon absolutely does not matter this game, because Skyline's not going for drops. But he could've. 
but he could have, and if he did, this pylon would have been slightly helpful. If you're going to be doing something, try to make it do two things. Anyway, uh, Jumper's going in for an attack. It's a little bit bigger of an army than he had a little while ago that I said was way too small, but it's still too small to make anything happen. Whoa. What? I'm on the calendar now? Say what? Checking that shit. Oh, hey, I'm on the calendar. For noon. Whatever. Alright, let's uh, put myself on that shit. Boom. Done. Saves and changes. Did we put the wrong time? No, because I would have seen it if it was the wrong time. It, it just got accepted. It might have been also submitted at the wrong time as a... As a, uh... Unrelated... Goof? Okay. Yeah, that's game telling me to attach myself to the event. Which, actually, it's something that I shouldn't do. Um, if I attach myself to the event, I don't show up on Team Liquid until the event starts. But if I'm just not attached, then I'll be on the sidebar of Team Liquid, and then I can change myself as soon as it comes up, and then I'm just... I get more exposure that way. The alternative, though, is that I forget to attach myself, and then I never get attached to the calendar, and then Team Liquid gets mad, and I'm not in the best place possible. So it's probably not worth trying, but... Theoretically, it would be better if I did not attach myself to events early. Like I always do. Oh. So, three base versus four. Jumper's got an Arbiter tech. Um, he's gonna need some sick recalls. Oh, Jumper! Jumper doesn't like mines. I don't know what it is, man, but, um... It's not even like, I, I, I don't even know what the difference is. I don't notice Jumper doing anything particularly different than most other Protoss players when it gets to later stages of a PVT. But whenever I watch one of Jumper's PVTs, I'm just like, oh man, mines are just so fucking unfair, there's absolutely nothing you can do against them. But then I watch other Protosses play, and it's like, oh, you can totally, like, not die to mines. It's possible. Whenever I watch Jumper, it's like, I don't know how you would ever do that. It just seems way too hard. It's more of a compliment to other Protoss players for making it look easy, more than it is a slight on Jumper, but... Jumper in mines, man! This happens a lot! <laughs> Alright, going in for the Storm Drop. Um, wow, that's bad. All right, um, I have a mod note. Game two of the series. I don't know if I should. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to read this yet. So I'm going to kind of ignore that Skype window. It's something about game two and it may be spoilery. Anyway, uh, dropping some Templar in. That's a beautiful storm. That storm's also pretty strong. That's a really nice storm. He needs like f three more Templar and six more storms. Right there. That would be nice. Um, unfortunately, he's 60 supply behind Terran. Yeah. Nice game, Skylin. Very nice game. Jumper, don't be so greedy with your opening builds. Two people link the same thing in chat. I don't know why people are linking that. Did somebody ask about that? Oh, somebody totally did ask about that. Okay, cool. All right. So. Um, I guess I'll read this now. I guess I'll read this now. Apparently, on two separate occasions during game number two, Skyline disconnected. In both cases, Skylime was losing and Jumper was going to win. 
And in both cases, Jumper said, no, no, let's keep playing. We'll just try again. So apparently Jumper could have just taken game two, but this is their third attempt at game number two. And we'll see if Jumper can take it for a third time, apparently. Or whether uh, his generosity will be his downfall and he will lose the first set 2-0. All right. Whoops, I never got that thing. I was thinking about it and I said, and I thought I'll do that later. And then I never did it later. All right. So put that here, make it a little bit bigger. Overall, oops, that's not what I want. Overall, zero to zero, and on the right side is Central Europe, and on the left side is an A. Brilliant. And I don't like those colors. There we go. And I need to not fix the overlays. Overlays are all correct. Oh man, that's convenient. All right. So, right side, blue Protoss. Do you need to change the uh, positions? Three o'clock is Skyline. Left side, purple Protoss. Nine o'clock is Jumper. I knew the overlay didn't exist. I was working on other. I was working on this overlay. Unless it still doesn't exist. No, it's 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 there now. Yeah. I, I, I knew that. Attach myself? I was attached. What are you talking about? 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 How would you know whether I was attached or not? It's not even freaking up yet. Don't scream at me in cap locks when it's like I already attached myself. God damn it, man. God damn it. Okay. Um, so... Skyline's making kind of a wall. Almost positive that's not tight. Even, uh, not even zealot type. Jumper did make an early zealot in the last game, but this game deciding against it, just going straight for core. out rather standardly so far uh, both players being rather passive um, yeah both players being more passive than they were last game jumper building early zealot and use the early zealot to attack this game uh, going straight for the dragoon last game skyline went for a very strong FD push um, with six Marines this game he's built one and then stopped production so not going to see the earliest stages of aggression for either player or the second earliest stages because neither of them are cheesing either so, got range on the way. Dragoon should kill off that SCV. And there we go. Uh, or not. Or, you know, it can miss a shot. Okay, wait, that, 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 that SCV... The Dragoon fired three shots at the SCV, and that SCV had 35 health. That means that either the Dragoon magically did five damage on one of those shots instead of 10, or it means that a probe hit him earlier and the Dragoon just straight up missed a shot. That's not supposed to happen. Alright. 
So, um, apparently Scout is getting a little suspicious here. Uh, sending out his Marine, going to get a little bit better of a scout, and it's going to be killed in the process. It does see the two Dragoons are coming. The Siege Mode's already up. And Skyland's just uh, going with the very safe Siege Expand on this map. Ooh, all oh, that probe's dead. Um, hmm. I don't know if the Dragoons are really going to be able to fight the tanks. I mean, the tanks can't hit them until the Dragoons start firing because they won't have vision up on the cliff. But I don't think the Dragoons can quite reach the tanks that they got over here. And even, and even if they can reach both of the tanks, now that there's two tanks, I don't think that the Dragoons can win. All right, answering questions time. This thing is um, when it freezes and there's a little plus sign, that is all the resources that have been gathered in the past minute by either of the players. And so once every minute, that little thing will come up to show how many resources they've gathered in the past minute. Personally, I'm not a particular fan of it, but it's there and there's no way for me to turn it off. The Swedish Brood War Initiative. SBWI is the Swedish Brood War Initiative. They are a great bunch of folks that are trying to put out quality uh, Brood War products such as this. If you, um, if you are a member, if, excuse me, if you are a citizen of Sweden, you can join and the government will give the, will give the organization money because you joined. And then you'll have extra money and it'll all go back to events like this. If you're not from Sweden, you can also join. Apparently, the logistics of it are still being worked out. But you can join. You can join right now um, and do wire transfer and get it set. But apparently, the actual specifics of how that needs to be set up legally are still being quite ironed out. The PayPal is still being quite ironed out. I will be getting you guys details about that when I know them. But I do not know the details right now. Probably because there are none. So, jumper going five gate, five gate off one base. That's pretty cool. Five gate speed lot off of one base. I actually, this is new. This is new. I did not know this was a thing, but apparently it is. All right. Uh, deciding against it, even though speed is nearly done now. That would be kind of hard to break through. There aren't that... I know this is tight, but it's still, with that many zealots, it's gonna funnel, uh, funnel you in. That's a lot of bunker and siege tank to get through. Boom. That's how much the re Skyline mined just over 1,400 minerals in the last minute. That's what that is saying. Alright. Um, well, both players were thinking about taking out their warp gate, but Jumper actually does it. Uh, taking out that warp gate connects to the third base, so it allows uh, units to just transfer down there a little bit easier. Um, in the case of Jumper, I'm not even sure it's worth it, just because it's going to allow Vulture Harass a little bit easier. And it's not as if eh, the Protoss is slow enough that a lot adding an extra pass really makes a difference. On the, on the other side, for Terran, uh, taking that out can be nice. If you're really having trouble with lots of Protoss sitting here, it allows you to slow push along a very, very safe route to your third. Um, I asked yesterday, and he said that yesterday the PayPal was not ready to go. If it is, if it has changed in the past 24 hours, then it has changed, but I do not know about that.
Well, apparently, I got a message that said I need to be a more calm caster. So I'm taking that to heart. And more seriously, it's because Jumper's not doing anything with it. He, he threatened an attack, he kind of moved in earlier, it didn't do anything, he backed off before speed finished. And then after speed finished, he just ran home. And it's like, well, now he's six gate off of three base. There is nothing remarkable of, oh, it's not even six gate, it's five gate. It's five gate off of three base. It's, it's, he went the less economical route to get the same composition that Protoss normally has at this point. So, probes coming down. Uh, these mineral patches that block have 40 minerals each. So, he did not need to send that many probes, but he did anyway. Uh, Jumper going to be able to clear out that base, and now with the path in here, he can transfer probes a little bit easier down. But again, I feel that that's almost a little bit of a liability, because now it becomes very easy for Skyline to run in here, park the vultures here, shoot a little bit. Then when the goons uh, manage to get into position, he just scoots around back and starts attacking the natural. This seems very easy to do, so I'm a little bit worried for him. Alright. Okay, I'm attributed. Cool. I did want to double check that just to make sure it was on there. All right. All right. So there we go. Skylam is uh, floating out in his third. Three base Terran versus three base Protoss. And nearly dead even supply. 108 to 107. And now 108 to 108. Whoa. Hello there. Uh, jumper. Jumper. Damn it. I, I have to say this because then everybody will call me an idiot if I don't. I have to consider the possibility that this replay is bugged. I have to consider it. All right, no, he's paying attention. All right. Okay, it's fine. He just had, just said ten probes idle surrounding his nexus. That's fine. Oh, look, look, look at this liability. Look at this liability. Oh, this is exactly what I was saying. Okay, not exactly what I was saying. I said they would come, start in the third to go to the natural, not start in the natural and go to the third. But this, it costed him an extra like three probes. Four probes. All right. Okay. So, getting Storm once again. Storm was working out pretty well for him last game. He did some good stuff with it. Hopefully he can use it effectively again. He's setting up his fourth base now, and there's a cannon. This base can't... It's a little bit harder to wall it off. Um, the vultures can also come from this direction. Uh, obviously harder to come from that direction, but they can. And then it takes a little bit big of a pylon wall to block that, so... Can the backfield, not even gonna bother with the pylon wall, it looks like. Uh, Skyline. Despite the fact that there hasn't been really any major engagements, Skyline has, is managing to be uh, significantly ahead in the economy. Like, 20? 
20 is a pretty big margin. Oh, that's closer to 30. Hmm. I... I wonder what's causing that. I mean, Jumper I suffered a little bit of damage from the Vultures, but not that much. Oh, you know what it probably was? It's probably all the idle dudes. Like, in combination with the harass, all the idle dudes there for that long probably mean is uh, causing Jumper to be a bit behind now. Alright. Skyline's moving out now. 188 supply and 1-1 one, one upgrades. Where are the armories? There they are. Uh, boom, 2-1. So, we got the 2-1 death ball. It's a little bit late. Normally she comes out at 160-ish supply. This one came out at 180-ish supply. Little bit, uh, a little bit stronger than normal, but... Yeah, Jumper, you need some really good storms right now. I don't even know if storm is done. Okay, storm is done. Oh, man. Jumper, Jumper, like, being nice is one thing, but you're representing America right now. You're, you, m m America is more important than niceties, Jumper. You can't be, you can't afford to be throwing away games. Like, if you end up winning, then alright, being nice is totally fine. But it's not fine when you go and lose. It's not fine at all. In fact, as being an American, you should have, you should have been nice. You should have been nice at first and get the loss, then replay this game, and then try to claim that since there were two disconnects, you get two walkovers. That's what I, and win 2-1. That's what you should have done, Jumper. You would have made your country proud. And also Canada proud, because they get to be part of our team. Those lucky bastards. Alright, so, not exactly the best of positions for Jumper right now. Uh, natural being sieged down, completely isolated from his third and fourth bases. Little bit, little bit of a tough spot right now. Just a little bit. Um, over on this side, yeah, now we're trying to take out these bases. The well, minerals already mined out, so they don't even have to walk up and around. They can just cut straight across. There's this one Arbiter. You know, it's got two kills. It's putting in work. It's putting in work. It'll kill all these tanks eventually. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh. Damn, Zealots are sealing the kills. You know what's really happening? I don't even think it's the Zealots stealing the kills. I think the Zealots are allowing the tanks to steal their own kills. To not allow this Arbiter to have more than two kills. Because this Arbiter's done more than two kills worth of damage. This is a... Uh, it's a pretty nice Arbiter right now. Pretty much uh, Jumper's only hope. This Arbiter. He just has to hope that Skyline forgets to build Goliaths. Ever. Oh, we got a third kill. Oh, that was a dangerous pun. Oh, that was a dangerous mine. There we go. There we go, using those mines. Oh no. Oh no, he built Goliaths. Jumpers, one weakness. GG. Instantly GG when you see the Goliaths. What are you going to do against that? Alright, congrats to Skyline. Taking game number one. Or set number one, 2-0, putting Central Europe up on the board.